right, so welcome everyone. We're just, we're gonna get started um, because we have a really packed uh, schedule today. A lot of information that I wanna make sure that we cover. Um, no worries for anyone who joins us a little bit late. We will be recording this session and we'll make sure to share that with everyone. Um, so welcome uh, to Job Search Strategies. Um, <laughs> that's <laughs> As I was saying, um, welcome to Job Search Strategies. My name is Giannina Chrisman. Um, just a little bit about me uh, so that you understand where I'm coming from and, and what my function is at Macaulay. I'm the Associate Director of Career Development. I've been at Macaulay since December of 2013. Um, so that's about seven years at Macaulay now, seven glorious years. <laughs> um, I also serve as the co-president of the Career Services Association of CUNY um, for the past two years, and that oversees all the directors at all the CUNY campuses. Um, and it's been a really wonderful experience to learn and grow um, with my colleagues. I'm also the chair of the Diversity Task Force at Macaulay, um, which is a really important um, important function for me and I'm, I'm really glad to work with my colleagues at Macaulay on, on those initiatives. Um, before that, I worked um, in workforce development and two nonprofits and prior to that, I worked at um, Hunter College as an academic advisor and an assistant coach um, for the fencing team there for many, many years. Um, so that's to say that's who I am. Uh, we're going to get to know each other over this session um, and that Hopefully you can trust the information that I'm giving you. I apologize that I don't have my camera on, uh, but Con Ed is here today and they're changing our meters. So they're um, gonna be shutting my power off any minute now. Um, so the fabulous Amy Rudin is helping me today um, to go through the slides. Uh, so we'll hop right into it um, because like I said, we have a lot of information to cover. Um, Jamie, if you can go to the next slide. Um, so basically what is job search strategy It involves all eight of these steps, um, who can help you, how to identify your skills, um, you know, making sure that you're creating your resume and cover letter, doing your research and staying organized, um, how to apply and when to apply, right? Um, the selection process, preparing for the interview, and then the follow-up. However, for today, um, we're going to focus on two things and that the first is um, who can help you, right? And Jamie, you can go ahead and hit the enter button. And the next is uh, doing your research and staying organized. Uh, you were right, Jamie, you can hit the enter button again. <laughs> Um, there is no need to write things down furiously um, because like I mentioned, this is being recorded and we'll make sure to share the PowerPoint with you as well. Um, I ask you to please make sure that you're listening to the information that I'm giving you because it's a lot to take in um, and it can be overwhelming at times. Um, so we can go um, to the next slide. Oh, before I uh, go on, uh, please hold your questions until the end of the session. Um, and place them in the Q and A uh, the, in the chat. And I'll make sure to go over your questions at the end of the session. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna cover is networking, right? Um, it's incredibly important. That's the part where, you know, you can identify who can help you. Uh, Jamie, you can go to the next slide. And this is a quote to kind of get the point across, at least 70%, if not 80% of jobs are not published. And yet most people spend 70 to 80% of their time surfing the net versus getting out there, talking to employers, taking some chances and realizing that the vast majority of hiring is friends and acquaintances, uh, hiring other trusted friends and acquaintances. Um, and I'll let you know, only 70, um, um, only 7% of job applicants uh, get this kind of referral yet referrals make up 40% of new hires. Uh, clearly networking isn't just one potential route to finding a new job, it's actually the most effective path. Um, so I wanna make sure that you are reaching out to um, friends, Jamie, you can go to the next slide, um, that you're reaching out and telling everyone that you're looking for a job or an internship, right? So that includes family, 
friends, peers, professors, right? Even the cashier at the grocery store. And I know that sounds really funny, um, but of course you wanna do that organically, right? You don't wanna go around saying, hey, I'm looking for a job. Do you know of any jobs available? But instead giving a narrative to it and letting folks know where you are and how you're proactively working at finding these positions. When folks start to see that you're really spending a good amount of time and effort into it and you're not asking them straight out, uh, do you know of a job or, or is there anything that you can uh, do for me? People tend to shrivel up inside themselves when you make that kind of ask. Um, so I always tell students that the best approach is to let folks know what that narrative looks like, right? What am I doing right now to find a job? I've been on Idealist, I've been on Indeed, I've searched here and I, I can't seem to find anything, but I'm really hopeful, right? You always wanna attach the enthusiasm and the motivation that you have to find a position. Um, the second one that I would recommend uh, utilizing is the Macaulay Alumni Mentoring Program that lives within Career Path, our job portal. Um, and so those are a group of alumni that are already available and willing to help uh, other Macaulay students find uh, resources and, um, and making connections with you, which is absolutely important. Uh, the third is LinkedIn. And I'll do a shameless plug for Jamie's uh, LinkedIn 101 at 2 p.m. today. I would highly, highly recommend attending that uh, to learn how to leverage that powerful networking tool. Um, but basically, you want to make sure that you're connecting with folks. You're going to a conference or you attended a webinar. Make sure that you find them and you send them a personalized message. Wow, that was a really wonderful session that you had today, or I enjoyed meeting you at, you know, through the virtual conference that we attended. Make sure that you're immediately making that connection and personalizing your message to that person. Um, then I would say career fairs. Um, I know it could be daunting a lot of times. Um, and back when things were, in, you know, in person, uh, you would stand on a long line to speak to someone. Uh, but I think the key here is not, um, you know, were you able to make a successful uh, elevator pitch, but instead getting that contact information, right? Um, if you feel that you didn't make a strong impression when you met them at a career fair, you could always follow up with an email. As long as you get that person's business card and you're able to stay in touch, that to me is the most important part about attending a career fair. You send them an email, you let them know it was so, so wonderful meeting them at that event, et cetera. Um, so if you see a, a kind of trend of what I'm talking about, it's really that follow-up is incredibly important. Making that connection is incredibly important and staying in touch with folks is incredibly important. Um, also attending other professional events, as I mentioned before, meetups, competitions. So if you're you know, into um, the tech field, something like a hackathon, what have you, you always wanna make sure that you're um, staying in touch with folks. And yeah. All right, so another um, suggestion is that there are plenty of ways for us to make connections over social media. If you already have an account, if you don't, I, I wouldn't say that you need to create a social media account in whatever sphere that is. But if you do hold an account either with, uh, let's say for example, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and even TikTok, um, I would suggest you know following a company, following someone influential that you really enjoy um, because a lot of times they will share openings on there. Um, I know that for example, Viacom uh, posts whenever their recruiting season opens up for their summer internships, they will post that on their Instagram and their Twitter um, accounts. So make sure that if you do have an account that you're making an effort to follow these kinds of companies and influential people there. Um, it's also great to network with folks, right? And tag them in any kind of post that you make. Oh, and I enjoy hearing, you know, for example, I enjoyed hearing a keynote speaker so-and-so tag that person in that and let them know how much you enjoyed hearing from them. Um, this is all about making connections and making sure that some that you're visible and someone remembers you by the time you go to apply. Uh, companies do uh, make sure that, you know, they take note of anyone who is a follower or who understands their company culture, um, etc. 
So then how do you find um, these opportunities other than social media and all these other things, either, you know, from networking and all this other stuff I'm talking about? Um, I would say that industry specific or um, particular websites are really uh, key. So um, these are my picks. I enjoy LinkedIn. Um, I've heard many people get jobs off of LinkedIn, either from getting uh, recruiters that reach out to them or by applying through their jobs uh, section on LinkedIn. Um, I would also say that our Simplicity System Career Path, our job portal, um, is also uh, one of my favorites, not because you know I work at Macaulay, uh, but because home campus job portals um, each career services office has to have an employer relations arm. We are creating uh, relationships with specific employers and partnerships with them. Uh, for example, um, the latest one for us is EY. We just had a conversation the other day and they are posting with us specifically as well as some other colleges to recruit Macaulay talent. Um, so you know when you log into Career Path that those are specifically employers that are reaching out to us to hire you. Um, so I think because it's so narrow that that's, you know, your chances of getting a position are extremely high. Um, then my other suggestion is to go directly to that company's website. Do you have a dream company? You know, go to their website, go to their career section and check out what kind of postings they have on there. Um, Jamie, if you can go to the next slide. Then there are other more industry specific websites that I would recommend. I really, really like narrowing the search down. Um, I think a lot of times we think, you know, I'm going to do an Indeed or Monster search. Those aren't really my favorite. Um, what they do is scrape the internet for keywords. The posting can be expired. The posting can be a scam. Um, so I would say be very careful with those. Um, Google, Indeed, you know, Monster, uh, Career Builder, I would say use them as a starting point and then cross-reference that with the company's website or with any of these industry-specific websites. Um, there's much more um, specific jobs there than kind of you know, going to a general website and have, having to filter through a ton of jobs all the time. Um, so I've listed a couple here just to show you, um, you know, where you could go for each uh, particular industry. Uh, for example, accounting, I would recommend accounting jobs today. Uh, public relations and marketing, I would highly recommend mediabistro.com. Um, Jamie, if you can go to the next um, slide. And for example, uh, anyone who wants to work in a college or university, we have a specific portal as well, and that's higheredjobs.com. Um, so companies will specifically post on these websites, and I think the likelihood of finding something that is related to your search is uh, very high if you go there. You can go to the next slide. All right, so another way to find out where to find these opportunities is within our Macaulay Career Guides. <clears throat> we are in the process of uh, updating our Searching for Jobs uh, handbook. So if you could take a look at the ones on the right, you see the white background and the little ribbon across, those are the most updated ones. Um, the one on the left, which is our Searching for Jobs, uh, it has not been updated yet, but it will be updated on the website pretty soon. It's still, I think, uh, a pretty good handbook at the moment um, for you to get all the listings that I put in the previous slides. All of those specific industry websites are, on, are in that handbook. Um, you might also want to consider taking a look at some of our under, other handbooks. Um, for example, we have the Remote Job Guidebook. That one will list specifically um, remote we websites where you can find remote and virtual positions. Um, okay, yes, that's a great question. Um, so where can we find these handbooks? If you Google Macaulay Career Guides, it will be the first option that comes up. Uh, that's my favorite way to find it but it is on the Macaulay website. Once you go in there, um, it is under uh, life after Macaulay and, uh, and it's labeled as uh, career development and you'll see the career uh, guides linked on there. Um, but like I said, I think the easiest way to do it is by Googling Macaulay career guides. 
All right, so another option um, to search for even more opportunities is a really awesome tool uh, that is free to all CUNY students, and that's Vault. Uh, so Vault is originally a uh, kind of research tool that used to make these books that would say, you know, top 20 companies to work for, for a specific industry or for, let's say, for example, for diversity initiatives, right? Um, but now they have a jobs portal on there as well. Um, so they, um, I'm sorry, an internships portal on there uh, where you could click onto that link and be able to see any of their partner employers that are posting their internships. What's so great about Vault is that you don't, you're, you're not only gonna see the internship, but in some cases you'll see the contact information uh, for the per person who posted it on there. Um, and I think it really gives you an edge when you're doing your research and you let folks know, well, I found your internship on the Vault website. It just gives you a little bit more um, of a boost, I guess, against uh, other, other applicants uh, because it's very clear that you, you're, you're using Vault to do your research on companies. Um, and if you go on to the next slide, the way that you find Vault um, is by logging into Career Path. Um, if you see on the left-hand side, the menu will say resources and then resource library. And then when you scroll down, you'll see vault. We have a specific vault uh, Macaulay URL. However, as I mentioned before, vault is free to all CUNY students. So you probably have access on your home campus as well. Um, just by visiting uh, the Career Center, you'll be able to get that link from them as well. Um, but for Macaulay students in, in specific, you can log into Career Path, uh, go into Resource Library, and find the URL for Macaulay students. All right. So then um, what I would suggest is do your research and stay organized. I think this is one of the most important parts of this. Um, when I was an undergraduate student, I graduated into a recession. I'm sure as many of you are feeling, there were not many opportunities out there. It is grueling. Um, it, it can really do a number on your self-esteem and your motivation. Um, my favorite thing to tell people to do is gamify it, right? Make it a game for yourself, um, but set, up some rules, make sure that you create a schedule. Um, it's not healthy, I would say, um, to act as if this is a full-time job of searching um, you know, for positions online. I would say, uh, you know, make sure that you're spending maybe an hour or two hours a day looking through websites and applying or making connections on LinkedIn, asking people to go out for coffee with you, um, seeing if they might be able to give you some insight of, you know, how you might be able to stand out, where's the best places to go to find a position. Um, but don't do that all day and all night. Don't do a nine to five of searching for that. It, it'll absolutely, you know, uh, uh, I wanted to say disappoint you, but it, it'll really be draining is the right word to use. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're making a, a, a balanced approach to it where the effort, the number of days that you're spending, the, the time during the day, um, is in some ways limited, right? There's only so much that you can do. Give yourself a break, literally and figuratively. Um, you know, don't do it all, all day and all night. Um, my other suggestion is to save job descriptions um, and save websites. Uh, if, if you're, you know, if you work really well with Google Sheets, I would say create a Google Sheet for yourself uh, where you uh, start to log all the applications that you're putting in and see the job because uh, sometimes it takes a long time for companies to call you for an interview and you don't want it to happen where you go, well, what, what job did I apply for? What were the qualifications for it, right? And you're unable to find that job description. Um, that way, if you have it saved, for example, in a Google sheet, you'll be able to refer back to it and say, okay, now I can create a strategy around what I'm gonna talk about during the interview. Um, I would also recommend saving your search criteria. On career path, you can create a job alert. So once you put in the filters, let's say for example, you're looking for internships 
uh, but you can only look at, at internships that are paid, you can set those filters in there and then create a job alert for that particular uh, job function as well. Um, so make sure that you're doing that. That way you don't have to log in all the time to search for these kinds of opportunities. Um, the other piece, oh, go back. <laughs> You know, it's okay. Um, the other piece is to do your research, right? You want to learn what the company's values, uh, what their culture is like. Again, this goes back to, you know, hey, you, you've set up a wonderful resume and cover letter. Um, they've called you in for an interview. Now you really want to speak to, um, actually, even before that, when you're developing the cover letter, you want to make sure that you're indicating how much you know about that company. You know, I'm very excited to apply to X company because I understand that you value, uh, you know, philanthropy or, um, you know, I've heard that you have a wonderful company culture that you value diversity or what have you. Um, so make sure that you're doing your research. As I mentioned before, you can use Vault as a starting point. Also look up press releases and, and news that's out there about them. Um, because I think it's always very impressive when someone comes in for an interview or when they mention it in their cover letter um, that you've heard of a, a recent acquisition or, or something like that. Um, learn what the expected salary range for the position is. This is crucial. Um, you don't, you know, sometimes they'll ask you, um, well, I mean, it's it's not allowed anymore, but it, back when it was allowed, they would ask you to give them a salary range. Um, but either way, you should understand what the salary range is for the position in case it's something that's too low that you're unable to take, right? You don't want to get through the whole entire process and then find out that they're offering a number that you're really unable to take. Um, there are ways to do that. Glassdoor.com uh, is a wonderful website um, that will be able to let you know, um, you know, other folks' reviews and kind of give you an idea of what the salary range for that position at that particular company is, because each company is going to pay a different amount for um, a specific position. You also want to learn what the compensation package is. I wish I had learned this when I was younger. Um, there are incentives, right? You know, uh, maybe I'm willing to take um, a lower amount if I understand that uh, the company really invests in their employees. Is there professional development that is offered? What's the type of growth that they're, that they're investing in in their employees? What's their health insurance look like? Do you get medical, dental, vision? Um, what's the annual leave and the sick leave? Um, I know that uh, beggars can't be choosers and sometimes we have to take certain positions. Um, but like I said, I wish I had known these things because I think my approach to companies would have been very different um, if I understood that one company was more was a little bit more flexible than another or where they uh, allowed me to work from home sometimes. Um, I've heard of toxic environments where people go in um, and they're miserable there. Um, so, you know, you really have to determine whether or not that's something that you're willing to do. Um, if you can go on to the next slide. All right. Um, so I know I sped through a lot of that information. Um, we covered who can help you, right? Um, my greatest tip is to make sure that you're networking, that you're asking folks to go out, um, you know, for, uh, well, I mean, not these days because we can't do stuff in person, but asking folks if they would mind, you know, uh, doing a virtual coffee chat with you. Um, do you mind having a video call with me? I would really love to learn a little bit more about your role within the company. How did you get there? Uh, sometimes that also demystifies the, uh, the search process and the selection process. Um, identify your skills, do a little bit of self-reflection um, and understand what value are you bringing. Um, it's very, very powerful to know what we're worth. Um, and when you go into an interview that, that comes through in confidence, right? Um, so understand your skills, understand what worth you're bringing, what value you're bringing to the table, um, and really put a lot of thought into um, you know, what your strengths are. Uh, make sure that you're preparing ahead of time and that you're having someone review your resume and your cover letter. Uh, you wanna give yourself the best option possible. Um, do your research and stay organized, as I mentioned. 
Um, make sure that you're reading up on the company, that there are little tidbits that you can kind of sneak in there you know, organically throughout the conversation or in your cover letter. Um, and make sure that you're staying organized. I think that helps when we have a, a little bit of structure to also motivate us to you know, continue doing this search. Um, to apply or not to apply. Um, how do you read a job description um, when it says uh, preferred versus required? What does that mean? Um, so I would say if you meet at least 75% of the qualifications that are listed in a job description, go ahead and apply. But make sure that you're paying attention. If one of the qualifications, it says required and you don't have it, then I wouldn't recommend applying to it. However, it's, if it says preferred, um, then you can go ahead and apply for it. That's just a bonus for them, right? Um, as I was mentioning to a student yesterday, people don't really know how to hire folks. Um, so a lot of times it's, it's kind of a rush job to get a job description together and get it posted. Um, and they might not know what they're looking for until you walk through that room. Um, so don't be turned off if you don't meet every single qualification listed. Um, give yourself a shot. I would say if you meet 75% of it, go ahead and apply. Then also understand, and this is kind of attached to the, you know, doing your research, understand the selection process. What will that look like? Um, what will my interview look like? Will it be with one person? Will it be with multiple people? Um, is it a, an entire group of folks that will be asking me questions? You want to make sure, as I mentioned before, that you're prepared for the situations. That way, when you walk into the room, you're not thrown off by it, right? Um, let's say, for example, you do really well one-on-one, -on -one, um, but maybe not so well in a group setting. And there's a difference, too, where they might have a search committee. That means multiple people that will each be asking you um, a question, kind of round-robin um, style. Or is it going to be a group interview where it's a bunch of candidates with the interviewer um, because there are different uh, kind of rules for each one and so you want to make sure that you're prepared and you're not thrown off by the time you walk through that room for that interview uh, prepare for the interview make sure that you do a mock interview with someone hear how you you know you, you never know until you get to the interview if you haven't done one before what your nervousness will do to you will your palms get sweaty will you completely lose track of your thoughts um, that's what happens to me. I've learned um, through that process that I need to make sure to bring a pad and paper um, on a regular basis. If I get nervous or I get thrown off, I completely forget what my train of thought was. Um, so I know that that has helped me before. You always have to ask permission, right? Um, you say, well, is it okay if I take a couple of notes? Do not do as, um, you know, when I was sitting on a search committee, uh, I, uh, someone came in and was interviewing with us. She brought a pen and paper, but the entire time during the interview, she was taking notes. So she hardly ever looked up, right? So we want to make sure that we're engaged with the process, that we're asking permission. If, you're, you know, if your mouth gets dry, also understand that you can ask for water, um, but just take a sip, right? Don't like keep drinking water the entire time. Don't keep writing down on your pen and paper. Look up, do shorthand, write the questions down if you get nervous. Um, that way you can refer back to the question, but really do yourself a great favor and make sure that you do a mock interview and that you prepare for that. I know it's nerve wracking, um, but you really have to see what, what it's like for you um, when you get nervous. Um, and always make sure that you're following up. Uh, the thank you note is incredibly powerful. I will give you an example. My husband went in for the current job that he has with the New York City Parks Department. Um, he felt that he did not answer one of the questions correctly. In his thank you note, which is customary between 24 to 48 hours after the interview, um, he made sure to mention, you know, I, I don't feel like I answered that question as well as I could have. Um, I wanted to know X, Y, and Z and basically gave them the way that he would answer that question. Um, he did end up give, getting that job, but I think that's another opportunity for you to bring up anything that you might have not, you know, mentioned during the interview for God or you really wanted to point out. Um, but in general, the thank you note is customary, um, as I mentioned, between 24 to 48 hours. Uh, there are templates for that online, as well as on, in our uh, Macaulay Career Guides. 
um, so that you can send that out and make sure that you do because not a lot of people do. <laughs> you would think that most folks uh, do all these things that we're mentioning, um, but they don't. Uh, one of my colleagues, we, I was sitting in a search committee for her position and um, she was the only one that sent us a thank you note. Um, and that really put her at the top of the list for us because you know she mentioned how much she appreciated it. Um, if you do have multiple people that you're interviewing with, you do want to send a thank you note to each one of those individuals and personalize it for each one of them. Make sure that you're mentioning something that you were listening to during the interview. Oh, Jane, I really loved learning about your experience at, you know, whatever. Um, so that shows that you were listening, that you were really engaged, um, and that you're enthusiastic about the position. Um, so uh, I think that gives us an idea of where we are. I'll go ahead and open the questions now. I know that we went through it. Jamie, how much time do we have left? You, you did an hour, right? Yeah. You have 30 minutes. Oh my gosh, I really sped through it. All right, so we'll have a lot of time to talk to folks. <laughs> uh, Jane, could you just mention um, about the blogs as well? Oh yes, we have these wonderful uh, career blogs that we have on the Macaulay website as well. If you go on there and you just enter career blogs, it'll pop right up. Um, Jamie has curated um, a bunch of uh, blogs that students have written um, that can kind of help you navigate the landscape as well. Um, there are some really cool blogs on there. Jamie, do you wanna mention any that come top to mind? Totally. So uh, as Gia mentioned earlier, one of the best ways to network is informational interviews. Um, and so we have a blog about that and how to best navigate that. We also have one about organizing your job search. And in fact, we even have a template in the blog that's free to use on that will link to a Google Sheet. And that way you can plug in your information of people tracking people you met and you can customize it any way you want. Um, the other one that I think would be really interesting, especially, I don't know, I can't see the comments, but um, if there are any students, especially if you're a bit younger, like basic, really any age, but really, especially if you're younger and let's say you're a freshman and you know you want to be, I don't know, a graphic designer at a fashion company, I'm just making something up. The best thing you can do is go to a company that you think would be really cool to work at, like as a full-time job, like when you graduate and look at the job uh, requirements and the qualifications, right? It's almost like a checklist of their dream person, like you would maybe when you're dating. <laughs> and basically what you're going to do then as let's say a freshman or sophomore, when you get internships or jobs, use that as a template, like a checklist so that when you're looking for internships and jobs that you can kind of fill out the list so that by the time you graduate you're the perfect candidate because most people aren't everything on the list i would say maybe if there's 10 things maybe they're like six out of ten seven out of ten but if you do this strategy you could be 10 out of 10 and you will then beat the competition in no time um so there's a whole it's called reverse job search um and we have a whole blog talking about that more so those are just some examples but definitely check it out it's written by your peers um and i just help edit but it's really cool and if you're interested in writing um at the bottom of every blog it has my email um and you can write to me and then be a published author yeah and just to go back on the reverse job search, I think th that's one of the biggest things, especially during a recession where it's difficult to find right, your dream job. Um, and it can be really disappointing. But if you look at your dream job and you go, OK, well, what are the qualifications that they're looking for? Um, how do I get those skills on my resume? Right. Because this is all about beefing up your resume so that you are um, a more uh, you know, sought after candidate. Um, so I would say that works really, really well. Um, take a look at the qualifications for a dream job and then work your way back. How am I going to end up getting to that point? Wow, it says that I need to, you know, uh, get SPSS skills or something particular like, you know, software. Oh, I see that this position that's open is, you know, um, offering that as one of the things that I would learn in that position. Um, so make sure that you're thinking about skill building um, and how you're, you'll be more marketable. I think the reverse job search is, is incredible. Does anyone have any questions? You can go ahead and unmute yourself. 
um, or stick it in the chat. I'll be monitoring monitoring that. Um, but yeah, we're we're open to questions or situations. How should we create a schedule for the job search? Yeah, so really it's um, what works best for you, right? Um, so I would say, for example, for myself, um, I was trying out a lot of like electronic ways to keep myself, um, you know, on task. Uh, so what I do now is I use a planner. Uh, paper and pen just works a lot better and, and it sticks to memory. Um, so what I would do is go in my planner and say, okay, you know what, um, every, you know, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I'm going to spend time uh, for at least an hour or two hours a day searching on these websites, right? You really have to honestly figure out what's best for you. Um, but I would say, for example, let's say Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, I'm going to spend maybe two hours searching on these particular websites, right? And you'll have your Google Sheet open. You know what websites you're going to often. You're recording them. Um, for example, I really love Idealist. I should probably get paid to advertise them all the time. Um, but people forget about nonprofits. New York City has a ton of nonprofits. Um, so I would make sure to include uh, Idealist on my, on my list. Maybe I liked one industry specific website versus another, but you know, you have to still make sure that you're going through each of these sites and, and surfing through them. Um, so I would say one to two hours every single day, or maybe three times, three times a week. Uh, looking at jobs and um, and uh, and kind of applying to them, right? Um, if you have all of that ready, if you don't, then you definitely need to schedule into your job search. Have so and so review my resume. Have so and so review my cover letter and make that part of the process. Um, then, you know, the other part of it is also never have gaps. Uh, in your resume that you can't explain away. So part of that job search uh, schedule is also skill building, right? Am I taking a LinkedIn learning course? Uh, also free through lynda.com uh, if you have a New York uh, Public Library card. Um, maybe I'm spending one hour every day, you know, doing some sort of training for myself, right? That's skill building. Um, maybe another hour on a different day, I'm spending, you know, connecting with people, maybe doing the networking piece uh, and going on LinkedIn or reaching out to folks in my network, my professors, my friends, you know, hey, wouldn't it be wonderful for us to have a video chat? Let's hang out. Um, and then organically through that, you're going to be speaking to them about what you're doing. They offer their advice. You know, it's all about maintaining that connection and, and developing a schedule for yourself. So I would say part of that schedule needs to be that network working, needs to be surfing through those websites and needs to, you need to also schedule in time to edit your resume and edit your cover letter to make that specific for that particular company that you're applying for. I think a lot of times we want to take, um, I've had friends who like took maybe two to three weeks to work on their resume before they applied. And then they finally get to that website and the job isn't posted anymore. Um, so take that into account, right? You found a job, you spent your hour finding a job, make sure you're saying, okay, well, today at three o'clock or today at four o'clock, I'm gonna spend some time, you know, kind of editing my resume to make sure that it matches all the qualifications or some of the key words that I find in the job description. Um, I hope that helps. Um, but basically you have to, you know, make it work for you. But I would say, like I said, gamify it. <laughs> make sure that you're setting structures for yourself. Um, all right, so how do you negotiate grace, grace, graciously without hurting your chances if you have gotten an offer for a position? Um, yeah, so um, if I'm understanding correctly, so you got an offer, right? Someone says, okay, fantastic, Megan, um, we're gonna, you know, we would love to work with you. Uh, we're offering, let's say, $40,000 a year. Um, and then you go, oh, wow, uh, that's a lot, right? Um, but maybe I did my research and I see that the salary range for this position is maybe 40 to $50,000. Um, so after they make that offer, um, if it's over the phone, you go, oh, wow, that's so fantastic. I'm really, really excited. Um, can I take some time to think about it? 
that's perfectly fine to say. Then you go back, you take a look at, you know, hey, what's the salary range for this? Are they lowballing me? Or is this like exactly what would be expected? Um, if it's exactly what would be expected, maybe you want to bring it up a little bit more and say, would it at all be possible just considering how much experience I have? Um, you know, you always want to refer back to your education and your experience, right? You're, you're justifying the reason why you're asking for a higher number. Um, but then you go back and say, you know, because of all these reasons, uh, you know, would it at all be possible for me to get compensated a little more and give them a number, a target number to hit? They will come back and either say yes or no. Um, you know, they'll, they'll say, you know what, I'm, I'm really, really sorry. That's not something that we can do. Um, are you still interested? Right. And then that's up to you to say, yes, I'm absolutely still interested or no. Um, or they'll say, oh yeah, absolutely. You know, I've gone back and talked to the CEO or what have you, and they've agreed to, you know, come up to this amount or, you know, come up closer to the amount that you want. I would suggest not going back and forth further than that. Um, I think, you know, they, they offer you counter and then they offer again, that's, that's the end of that because you don't want to keep going back and forth. Then they don't think that you're as serious about the position and you don't want to lose that opportunity. Right. Um, but that is standard um, and it's acceptable. Um, so please don't be afraid to negotiate any salary, a salary that they offer. Oh, another thing that I forgot to mention is for graduating seniors, when is a good time to start applying? Right. Um, I would say in general, uh, you should start applying in the spring. But if you're not like a current uh, graduating senior, you should take a look at, you know, what your specific industry, what their pipeline looks like. For example, financial firms will start um, offering students through their, you know, junior year summer internship program. So if you did a summer internship your junior year, they will normally offer those students that went through that, that they feel really fit what they're looking for, uh, a job offer. So by like come September of your, uh, your senior year, you already have a job offer, so you don't have to worry about it. But I would say really the best thing is to understand the landscape, understand the recruiting season, and understand for your industry in specific, when do those offers go out? Um, but in general, I would say if you're graduating senior right now, this is a very good time to start applying for full-time positions. Okay, um, Samiha said, I had an interview for an internship position yesterday except I'm not entirely sure if it was a formal interview because they called it an informative session. Got it. For me to get to know the company and they get to know me, do you think I should send a thank you email for spending some time with me? Yes. If so, what would be a good way to word the email? Um, so that sounds like an informational interview and not like a formal interview. Um, they're testing you out. Um, so I would say yes, absolutely. Uh, send them a thank you email, let them know uh, that you so appreciate their time um, to, uh, you know, get to know you and to, uh, and to let you know about the company, you really feel like you got to know them very well, um, and say so that you're really looking forward if there are any opportunities there where they feel like you're a great fit, um, that they, if they could consider you. All right. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, so Madeline says, I'm considering applying for a part-time job. Would there be certain things I should look out for that differ from a full-time job? Oh, that's a good question. Um, part-time jobs in general don't have <coughs> a compensation package. They're usually going to be, you know, hourly positions. Um, but there is the rare case uh, where they might offer, you know, some sort of health or dental. Um, excuse me, my throat is getting dry. <coughs> um, so I would say, yeah, do your research and look into the company and see what that, you know, either the selection process looks like or the compensation package looks like. Um, but in most cases, um, and Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong, in most cases, um, it, it's gonna be a different process. You're usually filling out an application um, 
you know, even that is different. They might not even ask for a resume or cover letter. Um, it, it differs from company to company and depending what kind of position you're applying to. Um, and in some cases, you know, again, they might offer you comp uh, compensation package, health, that kind of stuff. But in most cases, they do not. I hope that answered your question. You're welcome. Um, Anuja says, we had a speaker yesterday who said that handwritten notes stand out. Absolutely. So should we send handwritten notes or email the thank you notes? Um, yes, handwritten notes absolutely stand out. Um, what I would recommend is make sure that the, that the handwritten note, you send it either certified or next day or something like that um, so that it gets there on time because it, it should arrive between 24 and 48 hours. That's the only caveat to it. Back in the day when we were in person, I would usually recommend like right after the interview, like sit in the lounge and write out your, your thank you note and then submit it to um, the front desk person and ask them to pass it along. You know, that way they know it, it gets there immediately. Um, or you can mail it in, but you have to make sure that it gets there between 24 to 48 hours. But absolutely, absolutely, I can't stress that enough. How, what a touch of like graciousness it is to get a handwritten note as someone who's been on a search committee. It's amazing because nobody does that. Again, no one does it. So that's the big difference. If no one else is doing it and you send it in, it, it really makes you stand out. So yes, absolutely. Great question. Um, Royal says, I have also learned that it, it's also helpful to look for temporary or seasonal roles as well. Um, Royal, what do you mean in that sense that it's helpful in what way? You can go ahead and unmute yourself if you want to. Hello, sorry, I just came out for a second, so it took me a it took me a minute. No, it's okay. Um, temporary and par uh, seasonal roles are sometimes I I've learned from some of my peers as well. They're typically offered on an expedited basis, so in the sense it might be a quick need for a company to find an extra helping hand, and it gives yeah. you a firsthand experience by it being off cycle and off structure, so you have more opportunity to learn and get to know the company as well. And it, it would typically be that you're kind of in a smaller pool of people applying since it's at a different timeline, as opposed to, for example, a summer program or, or a summer internship, for example. Yes, thank you for that comment. Yes, absolutely. Anything that gives you exposure or visibility to the company is always helpful always, always helpful if you're able to take a, a temporary or seasonal position. Um, for example, there are also for some folks that are looking for um, internship opportunities and maybe you don't have a lot of time or you have trouble finding, you know, like a 14 week internship. Um, there is a company called Parker Dewey and they offer micro internships. So those are kind of like project based, uh, temporary, almost like a consultant position. Um, they give you a project, you have a certain amount of time to get that done. Um, but it's a wonderful way, as Royal was saying, for the company to get to know you. Um, all of it, all of this, right, the effort in networking and, and in getting yourself in front of someone is for them to really get to know you and understand, wow, this person is amazing. They're a wonderful person to work with. They're easygoing or what have you, or they're really hardworking. But understanding what your value is, yes. If you can do a temporary or seasonal position, absolutely do it. The point of it is to get folks to know you. I will also add volunteer roles. Um, my very first job that I ever got um, part-time, I should uh, say, I got it through volunteering. I volunteered at the library. They got to know me. And then when an opening happened, I applied for it. Of course, they hired me because they already knew me. Um, so the point is for folks to get to know you and for you to do that in, or in an organic way. So I would also add volunteering or community service roles to that. Um, can you send a picture of a handwritten note in an email? Oh, that's a good question that I've never been asked. I would lean towards no, <laughs> but what do you say, Jamie? Oh, yeah, that'd be weird. No. <laughs> yeah, I would say that it, it, it would be a little bit of this read. <laughs> Yeah, I would say it loses a little, a little bit of that touch. Um, so I, I would prefer to mail it in rather than take a picture of it. 
Um, Anuja says if the interview was virtual or via the phone, should we still mail a note to their office? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Whenever you meet with someone, you're always thanking them for the time they're spending with you, right? The, you know, the time that they took out to speak to you. Um, so you wanna make sure, yes, you're absolutely thanking them for a phone call um, or a, a video interview. Any other questions? You have 10 more minutes. Oh, fantastic, okay. Thank you. Also, why should we save job descriptions again? Oh, yeah. So um, I was saying to save the job descriptions, you know, make a PDF of it. Um, because sometimes like you applied, I mean, there will come a time where you're either applying for a job or you apply to a lot of jobs. And you want to refer back to that job description to develop your strategy for the interview, right? If someone mentions something like three times throughout the job description, you know that that's important to them. You want to make sure that you're highlighting that. Um, either, you know, um, either in your cover letter, but in this particular situation, in order to save the job description, you want to be able to refer back to that once they say, hey, um, Anuja, you know, we'd love to, you know, have you come in for an interview and speak to you and you go, what was that job? What was the thing? <laughs> you know, what did they mention? Where were the, you know, responsibilities that were in there? So you want to make sure that you're referring back to that job description so that you can make a strategy around your interviewing um, with them. You're always wanting to customize it, right? I hope that answered your question. Okay, great. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, so Madeline says, if you land a job, but it's not, let's say your dream job, how would you recommend continuing the job search process? Should we begin right away with the job search process again as we begin work? Um, yeah, that's another great question. So these days, that's a little bit flexible. If you ask someone who's older, um, they would say, you know, stay there for a year or two years or what have you. I would say do what feels right. If the place is really toxic and you need to leave, I would prefer that you just leave. Um, so if you land a job and then you realize that it's toxic, right? not necessarily your dream job. If it's, if, if it's somehow helping you build the skills that you need to get to your dream job, then that's just a stepping stone. You stay there long enough for you to have good amount of experience under your belt on your resume. I would say minimum one year for that kind of situation. But if you land a job and then you find out that it's a really toxic environment, I would not recommend anyone to stay in that situation. And I would say, as soon as you land the job, you want to be very quiet about it because you don't want anyone to know that you're searching for another job immediately. And that applies to whether or not you've been working there for a month or 10 years. Um, but you want to make sure that you're you know, doing your search immediately right after that. Yes, I hope that answers that. And um, as I was mentioning with the gaps, right, in your resume that you should always be able to explain gaps away. Um, the same applies to, you know, switching a job. You will have to craft a, a democratic way to say that the job was not the perfect fit for you and that you had to leave that job if you were only there for, uh, you know, three or four months. Um, in some cases, people leave it off of their resume, but if there's a situation where they have to do a background check or they're asking you for every single place that you've worked, you're gonna have to put that down. And folks will, be, will ask you, well, how come you only spend X amount of time at this place? What happened there? Um, and you'll have to find a, a really, you know, a nice way to say, you know, um, I was able to land the job and unfortunately I, you know, found this out and, uh, you know, and you want to mention what you learned from that experience because the fear there is that someone who's hiring you will say, well, how do I know that you won't be here for two to three months and then leave, right? Um, so you want to make sure that you're communicating to them um, that you learned from that experience and, and the reason why you had to leave. Um, like I said, I hope that answers your question. Okay, uh, should you tweak your resume for the job you're applying for? Yes, I would recommend having a master resume with everything you know that you've done that someone has helped you kind of refine. And then when you're applying for positions, uh, pull out the ones that are relevant, um, but make sure that the resume looks full. I would say this is a tough question because it really requires someone to sit down with you and go over that resume because in some cases people will leave something off and then it, 
kind of, you know, uh, leaves it to the imagination, like what happened between here and here. Um, so I would say, yes, you're tweaking your resume for each job that you're applying for, but make sure that you're spending the time to really understand how that should look on your resume, what should go on there, how to format it, et cetera. Um, I know that's a really complicated way to answer that, um, but at the end of the day, yes, you're personalizing each resume for the job that you're applying for. If you have a more narrow search, let's say, for example, you're me and you're looking for career development jobs, I mean, my resume is not going to really change, you know, that often. Um, but if you're, let's say you have an interest in, in one industry versus another, then you'll have to tweak it each personally. Um, the would also be keywords from the job description in there. Can I just say one thing to that? Um, yeah. In terms of tweaking your resume, you're allowed to have more than one resume. There's not like some FBI checking on you. So as Gia mentioned, maybe you're interested in music and maybe you're interested in education, right? Obviously you could do those things together like a music teacher, um, but you're really, if maybe if you're really into music separately from education, you can physically have two different resumes highlighting those um, experiences to each industry because you should have your most relevant um, experience on the top. Um, so just be sure to save your resume appropriately so you're able to identify which is which. Um, so that way you're not tweaking it every single time. Yeah, and Thomas asks, would you say that we are in a job recession right now? Um, my answer to that would be yes. Um, we are short 10,000 jobs at the moment um, in New York uh, or nationally. I forgot which one it was, but we're short of jobs. We're not at the same place that we were at before uh, the pandemic hit. So I would say that, yes, although um, the recovery is coming, uh, it's slow moving. And we did gain a lot of the jobs that we had lost before. Um, but the key here is, well, are we gaining jobs that already existed before and people are getting rehired for that? the key is new job creation, right? So I would say that, yes, we're in a job recession at the moment. Um, so the strategy has to be a little bit different. Um, Janet asked if I am part of an internship and my supervisor is looking for new interns. Is there someone I can suggest for him to contact if he would like to add the internship opportunity? Oh, that's fantastic. Um, yes, please have them contact either myself or Jamie. Um, my email address is on the PowerPoint. So as soon as I send that out to you guys, you'll know how to, how to contact me. Um, I'm also on the website, so you could always refer them to me. Thank you so much, Janet. Um, okay, so Anuja asks, what are the red flags of a toxic workplace? Oh boy, where do we start? <laughs> a whole session just on that. I know, a place that makes you feel horrible, that is abusive. Um, where people are condescending, where there is uh, absolutely no consideration for you and your personal life, I would say is a toxic workplace. I feel like that's um, like that a gut be, feeling you get, you know? Yeah, where you're you're just miserable and you're unhappy and people make you feel awful about yourself. You should not be dreading to go into work. There's a difference between the, the work itself being boring or maybe not exciting, right? versus a place that is really abusive. That, that I would say is, is a um, Would you have any tips in regards to uh, preparing our resumes for automated systems, ATS? Oh, Royal, with, with the awesome questions. Um, yes, so make sure very quick, because we could also do, a, we do do sessions <laughs> dedicated to resumes. Um, but you want to make sure that you're not putting anything in the header or the footer of the document. They don't read that, um, that you're not italic uh, italicizing, um, or what's the other one, Jamie underlining. Yeah. Um, any of the fonts in your uh, resume. Yeah, go ahead, Jamie. Cause you're the expert in this area. You're so sweet. Uh, <laughs> so if you click on, first of all, do not, do not, do not do your resume in Google Docs. Don't do it. Put it in Microsoft Word. If you're a Macaulay student, you have Word on your computer. Um, so do not put it in a header. And what that means is if you double click the top of a Microsoft Word document, it'll literally say header. Don't put it there. I see it all the time. And if you submit that, it's like having a beheaded resume. Um, so that um, you got to make sure the margins are good. Really, if you just go to margins, um, either normal or narrow is fine. 
do not have any text boxes, do not have any images, do not have any italics underlining. Um, if you ever need help, you can always um, email me or Gia, but we also have um, a, I think a blog about ATS and yeah. a guidebook about it as well. Um, I think it's in the job search one, uh, but yeah, we're always here to help, but there's a lot of information about it, but you can always use GRI to help. <laughs> I like uh, Frazana's uh, comment. She said, I, I think this is in reference to the toxic environment. <laughs> if they say you wear many hats, AKA th doing three jobs uh, for the pay of one. Yes, you have to be very careful about that, right? Um, I, I wouldn't categorize that as a toxic environment. I would categorize that as an opportunist environment. <laughs> um, and people do take advantage of folks and say, well, you know, the, you know, instead of hiring three different people for a job, they hire one person to do three jobs. And I say, just be very cautious with those. Um, but uh, in some cases, I think um, it might actually help you, but as long as they're not taking advantage where it's like ridiculous um, and you'll know it inside when it gets ridiculous. Um, but in some cases that'll kind of help you build your resume uh, and be able to then move out of that position after that, so. Uh, but great point. <laughs> um, you can probably tell when it's not a toxic environment. Yes. All right. Um, so I think we're at time, right, Jamie? Yep. Yes, we okay. are. Perfect. Um, Janet is posting in our chat. If you could please help us know how well we did, if there's anything that we needed to improve, if we were awful, if we were great, um, we really would love your feedback. She has pasted um, the SurveyMonkey link in the chat. If you could please click that right now and just fill it out. Um, it would help us immensely. Um, I hope that this was an informative um, session for you. I'm glad that we were able to take so many questions. Um, I know it was jam packed with information. And don't forget um, to go to Jamie's session today, LinkedIn 101 at 2 p.m. Um, she offers some great advice there as well. Um, as mentioned before, all the information that we have, we do separate sessions for them, um, but we have that information in our career blogs if you'd like to surf through um, those uh, entries on there to get the information that you need um, to move forward. And we are always available um, for career coaching sessions to go over your resume, your cover letter, do a mock interview, the whole shebang, or just chit chat about you know, what your job strategy is. Oh, uh, Agnes says, Janet, when she clicks the survey, she doesn't see any job search strategies in the class section. What should she click? I'm so sorry about that. I'm going to fix that right now. So if you guys can um, submit that survey later, I apologize for the inconvenience. No worries. All right. So thank you all so very much. I, have, I hope you enjoy January Academy and have a wonderful rest of the day.